In this video, I am going to attempt to predict the plot for Fire Emblem Engage based on the trailers and my knowledge of past Fire Emblem games. After I've played True Engage, I'm gonna come back to this video and see how much of it I got right. So, let's get started. The story will begin with a brief exposition on the Fell Dragon, how he came to be, how he was eventually defeated and sealed under the ground. After that, we are going to immediately pivot over to Alar waking up in the cinematic we've seen with Cram and Fram standing over them. After some brief introductions, Aelorn and company will then walk outside the shrine and run into the first Corrupted Ones, and a fight will ensue. Cram and Fram will either become separated from Aelor or Vander, or Vander will tell them to simply stand back as he deals with the Corrupted, and that will lead into this prologue battle where Vander teaches us how to fight. Shortly after defeating the Corrupted Ones, I estimate that the next destination will be some kind of divine dragon shrine in Lithos where Aelar's mother, Lumiere, or whatever her name was, will be waiting for us. I'm guessing that Vander suggests we head there to ask her advice on what to do with the Corrupted Ones, since she has knowledge on how to deal with the Fell Dragon as she defeated him in the past. On the way to the Dragon Shrine, I think that's where Alfred, Celine, Chloe, and all the other people from Fyrne will join the party. We will either have to walk through Fyrne to get to the Shrine, or they will join us on the way to it. I think the people of Fyrne will be very much in focus during this first arc, and it's going to focus mainly on the journey towards the Dragon Shrine, where we will be attacked by Corrupted and Brigands on the way. At some point during this initial journey, we will unlock the My Castle feature, but this will act similarly to Fates, not having any major bearing on the story. It's just going to be a hub we come back to in between battles, and none of the characters will ever reference this place in the main story itself. Once we reach the Dragon Shrine, that's where we will encounter Aelar's mother. I think she'll come out and meet us, since we see this cinematic of her outside helping us against some Corrupted in her dragon form. Once we meet up with her, she takes us back to the shrine where she informs us about the Fell Dragon's awakening and explains the game's plot and yada yada. However, while she's expositioning, the shrine gets attacked by either Corrupted or forces from Elusia, and a battle begins. During the battle, Dragon Mommy gets separated from the rest of our forces while defending the ring that they are after. She gets killed before we can drive them away. I actually predict that the ones responsible for taking her down will be the four hounds, who are leading this attack. This brings them in early on in the story and sets them up as the dangerous villains they're supposed to be. In fact, I think the cinematic we're shown of them walking into some kind of building and saying they're gonna kill everyone is their introduction in this very attack. I think the building they're entering here is the dragon shrine that Aelar's mother is guarding. Once the battle is over and the four hounds are driven away for some reason, we see the cinematic showing Aelar cradling Mommy in their arms, and this is where she gives us the very first emblem ring, and gives us the quest to gather all 12 of them. I think this very first ring she gives to us will be the Marth emblem. I think it just makes sense to give the rings to the player in the order of the official game's release, starting with the very first one. Now, whether the four hounds manage to get away with a few rings before we drive them off, I'm a little bit unsure of. I think it would make sense if they did, but I also don't think they're going to lock away emblems early on. I think it's more likely that they'll try to steal emblem rings, but Aelar's mother is able to stop them somehow, and then they have to retreat for whatever reason. But not before killing her off. Knowing that Elusia is now after the rings, Aelar and company head to the kingdom of Brodia. I think it makes sense for Brodia to be the second arc of the game, because teaming up with them is natural as they're already engaged in war against Elusia. This is where we meet with Prince Diamant and his retainers. The fact that Diamant is introduced in the game as a prince and not a king indicates that his father, King Morion, is still alive at this point during the story. So that means that this epic battle cinematic that is shown between Brodia and Elusia, where King Morion is drawing his sword, still hasn't happened because we know that that ends with Morion most likely dying. I believe that when we meet up with Diamant, his father may have already gone out to war, and maybe we'll go on a bit of a side mission to gather some emblem rings, like Celica's ring for example. It makes sense that her ring would be next, as she's from the second game, and Brodia is also very similar to the nation of Regal from Gaiden Slash Echoes. While looking for the rings, I'm sure we'll encounter the standard corrupted ones and fight the occasional brigands, but I also think we'll start to skirmish with Elusia's forces. Sometime during the Brodia arc, maybe towards the end of it, we will see this epic battle cinematic where Morion leads a huge attack, and this is where it will be revealed that the Dark Priest Hyacinth is controlling evil emblems, as we have this cinematic of Lin appearing out of thin air to put an arrow through Morion's chest, while Hyacinth is using some dark magic to hold his sword in place. 
The fact that we see Evil Emblem Lin appear in an actual cinematic leads me to believe that the Evil Emblem rings may be fixed in the story, as I just don't see them making multiple cinematics depending on what the rings the evil guys are possessing, though that would be incredibly neat. I'll talk more about the Evil Emblems in a bit. For now, I don't think they're going to be super central to the story, they'll just be mentioned and then they'll come back later. Once we are done with the Brodia arc, I think the next place we'll go to is Solm. Looking at the plot from the older Fire Emblem games, it's pretty common for the main character to visit the quote-unquote neutral nations later on during the story, like how you only travel to Rauston after a while in Fire Emblem 8. So I think Solm will be a natural third act of the game. Here we will run into Timera and Fogato and all the rest and become friends with them, and we will most likely do our share of hunting for Emblem Rings, fight more Corrupted, and deal with the occasional Desert Brigands. There is also a chance that Brodia and Solm will be route splits. I say this because when I look at combat clips from both of them, the characters don't appear to be super high level in either of the clips shown, indicating that both of them can be done earlier on in the game as opposed to later. Or maybe we'll just get to decide in what order we will do them in, and maybe the enemies will just auto-level as we grow stronger. There are a lot of possibilities here. It could also be that we will quickly play through the early maps of each nation early on to gather up all the characters before we embark on the main journey. It's not a given that this game will do continents in a specific sequence. We could very well be jumping back and forth between them. Regardless of how the game chooses to move around early on, I think that we will eventually end up in Elusia, and this is where we will be fighting against the four hounds, either as a group or one by one as they lead their individual armies against us. And it will all end with us facing the Dark Priest Hyacinth. This is where the evil emblems will first be encountered. Now, I think the game will go about these in one of two ways. Either the enemies will just control the evil emblem rings that we failed to gather thus far, Maybe we can only get 6 out of the 12 rings on our journey, and the enemy will get the remaining 6. But I think it's more likely that they'll have some way of stealing our emblems. I say this because in the cinematic where Evil Marth first shows up, Aylor is screaming in agony, almost as if he is watching a good friend being taken away from him. This doesn't make sense if he doesn't have a relationship to Emblem Marth prior to the scene playing. So I think Elusia has some kind of magical technique inspired by the Fell Dragon to corrupt the player's emblems and temporarily steal them away. I'm still holding out hope that there will be exclusive emblem villains that the bad guys will use, but at this point I think they would have shown them to us if they plan to do something like that, so I don't think it's very likely. After fighting against Elusia, the Four Hounds and the Dark Priests, we will eventually face them all in a fight located in some kind of dark dragon shrine dedicated to the Fell Dragon. This is where Hyson drops the revelation on Aylar that they are actually evil, or somehow connected to the Fell Dragon. Maybe the Fell Dragon is their sibling, or maybe Aylar actually is the Fell Dragon. There's definitely going to be some kind of twists involving Aylar being evil due to their red and blue hair. It's no coincidence that the evil emblems shown all have red hair. Red very clearly symbolizes evil, and blue symbolizes good and Aylar having both indicates some kind of evil pasts. This revelation is going to make Aylar have a small breakdown, though I don't see the game lingering on this for very long. They'll overcome it with the power of friendship and break out of whatever spell Hyacinth attempts to cast on them. However, something tied to this revelation is going to make the Fell Dragon appear. I'm estimating that Hyacinth's ultimate plan is to gather the Twelve Rings together in this Dragon Shrine, briefly take control over Aelar, turning them evil, and then use the rings in unison to revive the Fell Dragon. This is going to end with Hyson getting killed, but as he dies, he's gonna laugh and say, haha, it's too late, the Fell Dragon has already been born, or something like that. At this point, the final act of the game now begins, and it sees us traveling to the broken nation of Gradlon, where the Fell Dragon resides under the earth. Here we will be fighting hordes of corrupted, and eventually it'll become a showdown with the big bad Fell Dragon himself. I see this final battle as either taking place in Gradlon or potentially in Lithos as the Fell Dragon invades it. It will all come down to a huge battle where Aelar jumps up and smashes their sword into the Fell Dragon's skull as shown very early on in the first cinematic. However, I foresee that Aelar will get somewhat of a bittersweet ending. Either it will result in them dying, or being forced to go away, or maybe even be put back to sleep. 
maybe he'll actually be need to be sealed together with the Funnel Dragon underneath the ground. And this is going to be very sad, the playable characters are going to cry, but then there's going to be some kind of twist where ALR returns anyway and hugs them all or something like that. It's going to be a very similar ending to that of Awakening. So yeah, that's my prediction on how the plot of Engage will play out. I'm probably going to be wrong about a lot of this, but it's going to be interesting to come back to this video and see how much of it I was able to guess correctly. I think I'm probably off in regards to the pacing and what continents we'll go to, but I think the overall structure of the story is probably going to be something quite similar. Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you think I'm right or do you think I'm wrong? And feel free to leave your plot review in the comment section and let me know how you think the game is going to be playing out. Anyway, my name is Finn I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like and subscribe for more Engage content. And as always, you can click the playlist in front of you if you want to be caught up on all the news I've covered about the game thus far. Anyway, my name is Finn thank you so much for watching, I'll see you guys next time, Bye bye